In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. In the classic language, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule, of course, do unto others. Do unto others is the shorthand of it, the shorthand reference to this verse that everybody, everybody seemingly knows the way the Our Father is the shorthand reference in the Roman Catholic Church for the Lord's Prayer. Do unto others. We all know it. The second half is not part of the shorthand, but is much more important, in my opinion, because it unlocks the whole thing. Do unto others, fine, fine. As you would have them do unto you. As you would choose to have them do, if it were you. In other words, if they were you, and you were them. If they were in your place, and you were in their place. That's it, isn't it? That's the real key to the thing. Do unto others, yeah, yeah, sure. We're supposed to be nice to people, I get it. I believe in God the Father Almighty, blah, blah. Do unto others, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. (gasps) No. Listen. As you would have them, as you would want them to do to you. If you were them, and they were you. If you were in their position, in their condition. And they were in yours. If you were weak and they were strong. If you were the one on the bottom and they were the one who was the boss. If you were the supplicant and they were the judge. If you were seeking refuge and they could give it to you. If you were poor and they were rich, if you were yearning to breathe free and they had room to let you do that, if you were devastated and broken and they could help, if you were searching for peace and they had a space for you to sit quietly, if you had less than enough and they had more, than enough. What would you want then? What would you need? How would you want to be treated? What would you want them, you, to be like? And understand, I know that some of us, maybe all of us sometimes and in some ways, know what it's like to be that other one, to be the supplicant, to be the one in need. But let's be perfectly honest. Most of us in this room, aren't in that position most of the time. Most of us try to avoid being on that other side of the equation. We're far more comfortable on the do unto others side of it. Yeah, yeah, be a nice person, do good, help them, got it. But the implied question that is asked by Jesus is this, more than we're comfortable with, what if others was you? What that What would you hope for? What would you fear? Would you be afraid of how you would treat you? Would you be afraid of being ignored? Would you be worried about being smothered? Would you find you condescending or dismissive or unfriendly or judgmental? For what? We know that this is the golden rule, and we know that it's do unto others. And the fun, happy thing I've heard us make it into a lot is treat others the way you would like to be treated. What a nice sentiment. We'd like to be treated nicely, of course, just like we think we'd like a sandwich for lunch. Jesus, real Jesus, tends to puncture all of our nice bubbles and pretensions. No, listen, what if it was you? What would you hope for? What would you fear? What would love look like? 
It says in several places in the Gospel story something like this, that all who heard Jesus were astonished because he taught with authority. Often it's contrasted with other teachers. He taught with authority, not like those other uh, teachers. And I think that's probably trying to describe the bubble-popping thing. Jesus isn't saying something nice. He isn't asking us to consider what we'd like or what we'd prefer, what we'd maybe someday consider getting around to. Jesus is asking us literally to step out of ourselves, out of our own powers and privileges and proper roles, and to consider what it would mean to struggle with what it would mean if we were that other, that potential person being encountered by us. What if the one knocking was you? What if the new person was you? What if the one in need was you? What if the stranger was you? What if the one fleeing danger was you? How would you have them do for you? It's hard for us to imagine ourselves as people other than ourselves, and for some of us it's especially hard for reasons of personality or history or whatever reason. Some of us struggle more with that kind of imagination, with imagining ourselves as almost literally another person with a completely different life and a completely different set of factors and a completely different set of stresses and worries and needs than the ones we actually have. But it's not easy for any of us to do that, to put ourselves in the other place. It's a narrow road to walk. We know words like empathy and compassion, and they're certainly Christian concepts, and we try, we struggle to feel them for others. But to me, the question, what if they were you and you were them, is most compelling. Because the truth is, it could have been. None of us choose all the things that happen to us and all of the factors and circumstances that we experience, no matter how virtuous or hardworking or practically perfect in every way we've been able to be. All of us are here where we are by the grace of God alone. And what if it was you could still be, because none of us knows for certain what's going to happen to us tomorrow. Jesus calls us to be ready and to look up and see the world with eyes of love and to ask always, what if that was me? What if they was me? What if you were me and I was? was you. What then? May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.